Just a quick disclaimer before we get into this data. Um, don't worry about what the scores are out of uh, in this data set or what they mean. They're composite scores. If you're really interested, you can do a deep dive into the TIM study and see how the scores are, are calculated. Um, they're super specialized. And the reason I'm glossing over that part of it is when you actually start analyzing data in your careers, you'll have like an intimate knowledge of what the measures you're using stand for. Once you've established that the measures you're using are fair, then you could look at them objectively. I spent a lot of my time up here at COCC uh, editing measures, creating new measures, because we realize that some of the measures we use around here need to be changed to be uh, made more uh, relevant. So don't get too hung up in what the numbers mean right now. Just trust them and realize that the methods we're learning about outlier identification will hold across the board. Okay, my friends, so here we are. Uh, let's crack open the TIMS data spreadsheet and take a look at it. So what we've got here in the first tab, here we are, enable the editing. Um, you've got uh, ranked by, by score. Uh, Singapore had the highest 2019 score at 616, all the way down to Morocco had the lowest at 388. And where's the US in this crew? I know we're in here somewhere. There we are, 515, okay. So the question really is, would you, looking at this data set, be able to identify any of these data points as potential outliers? We can't use the, uh, the previous rule, something that doesn't happen very often, because if you're looking at this data, each score happens one time. And also, these scores are based on a measurement, not just did it happen or not. These all happened, there's a sliding scale of the measurements. So we have to take that into consideration as well. So what can we do? Well, one thing that we can do statistically, not probabilistically, is come up with a typical data value in a data set like this, and then see if any data points are far away from that typical one. So what we can do is first, we gotta look at where the typical data points are. So what I'm gonna recommend that we do is actually crack open the Excel calculator. Let's have some fun with this. Let's have some fun with this. I'm gonna increase the font size a little bit so we can see what's going on. Um, you might notice, and this is often gonna happen, you've got data in column form here and we've gotta put it into row form over here in the calculator. Well, I'm gonna show you a neat little Excel thing here. Um, I'm gonna grab a number of data points I'll grab down to Kazakhstan and I'm gonna copy those and then I'm gonna come over to the Excel calculator I'm gonna click in this top left now don't just paste because if you paste here it's gonna paste them vertically we're gonna go to paste over here paste special we're gonna paste the values and we're gonna pick transpose and what that's gonna do you'll see here in a second it's gonna what transpose means to take vertical and make horizontal or vice versa. If it's horizontal, it will make them vertical. <laughs> so let's come back over here now to uh, the main data set. We're going to start. I think we can just grab the rest of them. France down to Morocco. Copy. Wander over here. Click down here. Paste. Special. Transpose values. <laughs> There they are. All right. And what's nice about this, I mean, obviously, you can also type each one in if you wanted to. I just don't think you should. And now you get all the cool statistics that we've, we've chatted about uh, already and some other stuff we haven't talked about. We'll talk about that in the next couple videos. All right. Well, let's look at the data. Let's let's uh, scroll down here to the histogram. Now, clearly, we're looking at the wrong place. Ten bars is fine. But when you got a minimum value of 388 and a maximum of 616, we'd, we'd better change the cutoff. So I'm going to change it to 350 and maybe 650 and then break it up by 10 bars. There we go. That looks like a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent histogram. I'm going to check my my skew checker. <laughs> Not really skewed. And I know some of you still feel pretty funky about this little skew checker throwing out the vote of not really skewed. I've always just, rather than looking at some skew measurement, let's just look at some more histograms. Let's take a look at 15 bars. Okay, yeah. This, it, this is interesting over here. We've got this little group out to the side. The data does tend to follow kind of a hump uh, and then a, and then like a tail, a hump, and then a tail. Yeah, we got a little bit of goofiness out here in the high, in the high ends. Let's go out to 20 just to see what that looks like. Okay, so I guess that a question that you might have is, are these values out here atypical? Are they too high considering the rest of the data set? The rest of the data set is down here. Are these too high? 
Let's take a look at some more views, some different numbers of bars. Can we measure what's going on between these top five? And the answer is we can. There's a couple pretty well-established uh, statistical measures of outlier. Let's go to the board and take a peek. 